Uh, you know, we're, we're disappointed, um, to be honest. We, um, we could have could have played better than we did. Um, I think, uh, you know, so that's the, <clears throat> the initial prevailing thought. And um, it's good, though, to have the guys in yesterday to, to take the good, um, you know, from it and to learn from the things that didn't go so well. Um, you know, after the first week, I said one, one game doesn't make a season, and that holds true for, for week two as well. Um, we're we're, we're going to be just fine. Um, you know, you, you mentioned uh, some of the positives. You know, offensive line, I think, really played well. Um, you know, in our mind, didn't give up a single sack, um, and <clears throat> we rushed the ball on them. Um, and it all started with our offensive line, just r really pleased with how they played. And, um, and we've got room for improvement there, too, so that's exciting for us. Um, you know, and then defensively, we're still trying to stop the, stop the run first. Um, and I think they rushed for 12 or 15 more yards than we did. Um, but uh, we're trying to, trying to help out with safeties, but also, um, you know, help out in the pass game. And um, their passing game got to us. Uh, we gave them some space underneath, and they could make us miss. And then they had guys who could run fast and quarterback who was on. And so, you know, they threw it over our heads some. And so with some things we got to clean up um, in every facet um, of, of our game. But um, we still got better as a result and, and look forward to Charlotte. You look at the game, Dean Erickson comes in and you lose almost another 90-plus yard game uh, that he has. What has he shown you so far in the early season? He's tough. He's just tough. You know, he is um, He's an aggressive, you know, violent, physical running back, and he plays that way every play. Um, and uh, he, he's hard to tackle. He's got a will about him. And, um, you know, as an offensive lineman, as an offense, you just got to love that, uh, that you just know you're going you're gonna to get a, a hard-charging, um, tough runner behind you. And uh, so, yeah, Ian had a great first week and a, and a really good second week. Excited about him. You look at, at, your, at the quarterback position, Todd Porter throws for 287, also ran for another 46. Uh, now that you've had a chance to look at the video, what have you seen out of Tom Todd? He played well. You know, he really did. We, um, again, asked him to manage the game. This is a little bit different than the first week in terms of uh, our different cadence, our silent cadence, and the, um, the potential crowd noise. Um, again, getting in and out of different protections and in and out of uh, different plays. And, uh, you know, we weren't perfect um, with that, but uh, he did a pretty good job. And he really helped us with, the, with his feet. Our third down conversion percentage was – um, was really good, and um, you know that a large part of that was due to um, him running the football, um, and then managed the game well. So he is uh, continues to get better, and I think he played well. You, you look at improving third down percentage from week one to week two. You certainly uh, a vast improvement in that ratio. Is that just helping you stay ahead of the sticks in that regard? Well, we weren't when we were in third and long. We weren't as good. Um, you don't ever want to be in third and long, right? I mean, I think we had a third and 25 at one point. I think we were one for seven in third and long. But our third and short and our third and medium were really good. Um, and so, you know, those the first and second down matter. Um, you know, if we can keep ourselves into, into third and mediums, into third and short, you know, through, through two weeks anyway, we've been pretty good. You see the two guys next to you, and you look at uh, – we'll start with Chase on this side um, – Switching at the center position, thought we know the line certainly held their own, and, and that one sack certainly is still a question mark for them. But how do you think he's played? Oh, great! You know, I mean, again, we've been talking about it through since last year that you know we had five juniors, um, and all were going to be returning, and in our essentially our whole two deep from last year was going to be returning on the offensive line. Um, and Jake is one of those guys, and, and I mean this in a completely positive way, but he's like glue. Um, you know, he, he holds things together. You know, that, that's on and off the field. Just a guy that you trust, does the right thing, knows what to do, um, you know, has, has passion for the game and um, has been selfless, you know, with um, competing with another, with another senior and, um, you know, really played well. But it's like, you know, none, none of us are surprised by it. You know, it's not like, oh, my gosh, can he do it? He's started a lot of football games here. Um, and, uh, yeah, just uh, he and Todd just kept our team's composure, you know, going on the road and, and playing a night game um, against Missouri. So um, 
yeah, so it's, it's almost like no news to me. Uh, um, but uh, very good football player and um, excited about, uh, you know, seeing how that offensive line is going to continue to grow this year. And then on the other side, Jeremiah comes back after a limited playing time last year due to the injury. He's back this year, uh, finished as the team's third leading tackler and, and really uh, helped forge some momentum, especially that turnover right uh, really along the goal line. He got the ball back. Yeah, I mean, we missed Jeremiah last year. I mean, he, he played a ton for us as a true freshman, you know, that very first year. And um, like everything that he's about, you know, on and off the field and obviously very talented. And so we missed him last year. It's awesome having him back healthy, you know, both he and Pat on the outside and then Max Crosby, who's with us, but was red shirting. We essentially have three new defensive ends on our football team. And um, it, it's a really good group. And so Again, there's there's no surprises, you know, about how he's playing, and you know, I think that one of the things with Jeremiah is um, uh, he 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 executes the technique, you know, he's just so dependable on doing the right thing and the way that we play defense. Um, it's so important to be able to count on each other uh, to do their job, and um, he, he's one of the best at doing that. And then my last question before I let Al ask his thoughts on Charlotte. <clears throat> team making a transition a little similar to an OU team in that um, the last two years uh, stepping up from the FCS level. What have you seen from Charlotte so far? Uh, they're, I mean, they're a good football team. You know, I think that they're, the beginning of their season um, is analogous to ours in some ways, you know, where they have had a, uh, a game against a, a really good team that got away from them. And then, um, you know, they handled, uh, you know, Elon pretty well. And so I think in some ways, like us, haven't been in a, um, we're playing for four quarters in both of those games, but not a tightly contested um, four quarter game. And so I, I really believe that's going to be the case this week. I, you know, I think we, we match up well with them and they match up well with us. Um, I think it's going to be a really good football game. And, you know, they're in their fourth year. And so they've got a truckload of guys who are in their fourth, lo fourth year. Uh, so, you know, you just know that the, the leadership there. Um, the experience that they've got a lot of it big win for them at home um, back to back home games uh, we know where this is a big game for us um, and it's a it's a good matchup Hi, Coach. Um, just asking for a quick update on uh, Shaq looks like he got a little banged up there against Missouri uh, how's he feeling what's going on with him yeah Shaq um, is is injured and, and is going to be out um, so it's a real unfortunate um, injury that he sustained and and uh it's a uh, it's a it's a total bummer for him and for all of us and um, uh, so yeah he's going to be out. Yeah, I mean I haven't heard directly from the doctors, but it's not a, it's not short term. I mean it, it could be for the for the rest of the season. Um, and then looking at Pat, obviously got the start uh, against Missouri. Um, talk about his decision making and, and where he's kind of improving in that regard. Yeah, he's again he he played a really good game. You know he really did. I mean his his completion percentage. Um, you know, it wasn't perfect, but and we calculated five drops in there. Our offensive line did such a great job of giving him uh, protection and time to throw. But at the same time, he stood in there um, and uh, took that time and, and stepped into balls and, and threw them. Um, again, some of the things that uh, um, folks outside of the game plan may not, may not see, but just made sure that we were in the right play and in the right protection. Um, obviously did a good job with his feet, uh, extending drives for us and those quarterback draws and some of the rollout plays. Um, and then, you know, he's, he throws a, throws a catchable ball. Um, and uh, so we're really pleased with his development. Absolutely. Looking, you know, in the first half, you know, things were getting pretty, you know, staying pretty close, you know, through the, all the first quarter and most of the second. So, you know, what can you see from your team and, and what, you know, can you draw from that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> You know, so the way that it played out is we won the toss and deferred, wanted to play defense first, and um, you know they ended up getting a, the big play early um, and scored within I think a minute and a half. Um, uh, our first drive, we're moving the ball, got an unfortunate uh, third down penalty uh, when we had converted and got down to their plus 28. Instead, we're third and double sticks and punted and, and pinned them back, and defense forced the punt. Um, you know, they then returned a punt for a touchdown. So we're down 14 nothing in the first quarter. Um, but, uh, you know, defense holds. We get the ball, and, and we score. Um, go down the field, and it's 14-7. And, um, 
you know, it was the end of the second quarter, and it was second quarter of our first game. We talked about this, in the, you know, as a team yesterday. It was the second quarter of our first week, which was the quarter that, you know, we'd like to have had back. Um, and, you know, a 14-7 game became 33-7 to um, with some big plays and, and a couple of three and outs. And uh, we just can't, can't have that, you know. Um, I could have managed that better. Um, and uh, so it got away from us right there, and it happened quickly. Um, definitely uh, recollected ourselves, you know, at, at halftime and, and played, you know, all the way throughout all four quarters. But, uh, you know, to, to go against a, a talented team like that, you, you can't have um, mistakes and, and you can't have, you know, any sort of momentary lapse. And uh, that got us there at the end of the second quarter. Yeah. What are you seeing from him right now? Yeah, you know, I was saying earlier, he's just a, um, the way that I characterize him is that he is just a tough, um, hardworking, physical running back. You know, he just, he runs hard. Um, and I think that's a real lift to our team. You know, a guy whose just legs are always churning um, and uh, um, plays the game the way that it's supposed to be played. You know, so we're excited about him. and. You know, we've known that we've had depth at running back. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, we're going to have to to dip into that. Chris, have you, uh, how big is it for you guys to have a healthy offensive line right now? Um, well, you know, we have depth at our whole offensive line. We have a lot of uh, returning seniors. And with Jimmy and Kay John, um, two great tackles, and Cole and Wiley. And, uh, We've all played together a lot, and I think just having that chemistry with each other has been great so far, and we're going to grow on that. Obviously, by no means was a perfect game on our part, but uh, I think uh, as the season goes, we're going to get better every week. Does that depth help? You know, losing a guy like UT who's on the offensive line, yeah. what does that depth do for you guys? Uh, well, I mean, you see DT go down, but the coach can attest to this. It's been We haven't lost DT at all. I mean, he helps us every week off the field preparation, and. Uh, he's been great with us and the younger guys, and I think um, over the since I've been here, this is the best offensive line I've been a part of in terms of having that depth and everybody willing to prepare week in and week out, and it's been great. Would you say the morale of the offensive line is good? You know, everybody's in a good mood. Oh yeah, every day. Yeah, we come to work every day, and um, we're leading the offense. And I think uh, like having a competent quarterback behind us has been good so far, and going forward, I think we'll be good. How would you describe, you know, in your words, uh, Todd Porter and what he's playing the last few weeks? Uh, Todd's done a good job of managing the offense and um, going into a different environment for his, I mean, I don't know if it's his first time when he was at Western Kentucky, but uh, he did a good job of staying calm and staying even keeled throughout the entire game, which was impressive. Absolutely. Chase, you look at uh, yourself and how different is it? Do you have changed preparation when there's a different quarterback behind you? Um, being a the clap cadence team, I think it doesn't change as much because you don't have different verbiage for different quarterbacks and getting the call in and getting the checks. They're both capable of doing that, and uh, I think from in my situation, it has doesn't really change that much now. You're a kid in in a master's program already. Uh, how difficult is it to to be a, knowing that you've already gotten the undergrad completed and working your way forward and also kind of preparing you for that life after football career? Um, well, graduating in April, that was exciting. And um, going forward, being in the NBA program, I know uh, DT and Cole are both in it as well. So we're all, we work together in class and stuff. And I live with Cole, so it's been a good schedule so far. And we plan everything out and we have time to, uh, being online has helped a lot with being able to prepare extra for uh, football and staying focused on that. What's well. your career aspiration after all this is done? Uh, well, I majored in supply chain management in my undergrad, so I want to um, work at something sports related within a, uh, a corporation when I'm done. Jeremiah, on your side of the, <coughs> the ball, um, you're a, a kid who had to unfortunately sit out some portion of last year and watch. How has that process helped you grow on the field this year? Well, you know, I think um, me and Pat were both out last year. And um, during practice, we'd come in here and work out. And we'd talk about 
how are we going to get back on the field faster? What can we do while we're not on the field to improve our game? And um, honestly, we watched a lot of film together. Um, and you know what? The response to an injury is always to come back harder than what you did. And not to be set back or have that setback change your mind or change your thinking. Because when you are injured, it's kind of you want to take the easy route. Nobody wants to be injured, obviously. But to take the easy route, a lot of guys are not focused in practice. Um, you see some guys on other teams, not on this team, because we don't have a problem here. But you can see where other people um, can lose their focus during practice and things like that. But um, the injury, you know what? It was a misfortunate thing. But um, I'm glad that I'm back and healthy. Um, and I'm glad to be back with the boys, yeah. You kind of look at yourself. You're the, the youngster on, on that offense, on the excuse me, the defensive line, where we've got a redshirt senior, Ellis Green, a redshirt senior, Mike Brown, and then a redshirt junior in, in uh, Luke Slane. So you're kind of that young guy. How has it been to be learning from those two? You know what? It's a great experience, to be honest. Um, Pat, obviously, um, he's my role model. Mike Brown's a role model to me. And Luke McLean, I mean, all these guys have experience. Um, they teach me different moves, and they teach me um, how to become a better defensive lineman. Um, I don't think uh, for a second that even because I'm younger that I'm, they look down upon me. They're always including me on everything, um, me and Max, um, and everybody who plays, honestly. I mean, we don't feel left out. Um, it's just a great the D line, I think, has the best chemistry on the team. Um, that's just my point of view from it. But um, we're, we're such a close group, um, and we love each other. so. Academics certainly a big part of being a student athlete experience. You're a, a stellar athlete in the sports performance and, and fitness program. What what are your thoughts uh, on that program, and what are you hoping to do? After you know what? It's it's a pretty cool program actually. It's more of the business side of sports, um, which you don't always see, um, and the entrepreneurship part is different than what you think. You think it's a business type thing, but it's actually. Um, sports performance, but thinking differently than how others would think. So um, just different ideas on how to create different workouts, how to um, make a workout work if you don't have weights, if you don't have this. Um, just kind of a more of an ingenuity about it, um, which I really enjoy the creativity about it. And you know what? Um, with school, um, school, I've always enjoyed school. And um, the guys around me, um, Demarcus Moon for one, um, just a very smart, intelligent person. Um, and he's in the same major as me, and we just collaborate on things all the time, and it's nice to have a, a backup, um, somebody who can, you can talk to uh, just to help you out with things. What, what would you hope to do with that? Um, I want to become a strength coach, um, hopefully at a university someday, um, and just go from there, yeah, see where it takes me. Alex? Yeah, would you say those aspirations, you know, to be a university strength coach, uh, did that come from your time being injured and, and then the little impact that you've had? You know what, um, yeah. Um, our previous uh, strength coach, Coach Mack, I had a lot of time to talk to, and um, he's the one who actually introduced me to sports performance and fitness entrepreneurship. And um, I actually bought his book um, online, and I read it, and everything just clicked with me. It was, it was like an internal fire inside of me that, you know, I want to help and be, I'm, I'm obviously a student athlete right now, but I want to help other student athletes as I get older. Um, mature as a young man first, um, and then as athletes on the field also.